For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi, and today we're going to be covering the next phase in building the shed. So, what we're going to do is cover the walls, studying up the walls, and also I'm going to show you how to get the corners right so you can put your sheathing on the outside and inside. You need to know that so everything falls in place. I just bought myself a new torque gun, and I've been so excited about getting this. It came in yesterday. I ordered it off of eBay. This is a Metabo HPT. 36 volts, and it has some incredible features on it. You wanna see that at the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving one away. We're gonna be laying out these studs and I wanna show you how you get the corners right. Because if you don't lay these out properly, your sheathing that goes on the outside and the inside is not gonna fall right. The shed I built was 12 feet wide and eight feet long. So this is just a small mock-up of it. These are your base and top plates, all right? You're gonna have two top plates. But it, I'm not going to touch into the second one right now because the second top plate goes over and will lock these in. We're going to touch on that later. These two plates right here have to line up with each other when we lay out our studs. And these have to line up with each other. Now it depends on which way you lay it out. You could lay it out this way or I could let this run long and I could cut that short and let that run in between my two ends right here. I'll just set this against that board and I'll get my measurements from there and you'll see why this is so important to have that space back on this. So we're going to make this layout first. You're going to want a tape measure, a good square, and I recommend the Swanson Speed Square, and a pencil, of course. We're going to jump over here real quick because I want to show you exactly how this is laid out. I don't want you to get confused. A lot of people get confused when it comes to laying out these 16-inch centers. At every foot, you're going to see an arrow with the black shade in right here, okay? That's for marking off 12 inch centers. Right here, at every 16 inch mark, you'll have a rectangle that's red. So it's easy for you to have a reference. Now if I'm laying out for 12 inch centers, I will pull this across and put my first mark at 11 and a quarter. Not 12, because that's the center. And then right here, 12 and three quarters would be the other side of the board. So when I laid the board across here, it would go right in the center, just like that. Same with the 16 inch centers. You go at every 15 and a quarter. And you don't have to mark both sides. All you have to do is mark one if you want and put an X right here. That's what I do. That way I know that my board goes on this side of this line. As long as you line it up exactly even with that line, you'll be good. That's going to give you your whole layout. Now, here's a little trick that makes it easy. I take my square my speed square and I'll lay it right at 11 and a quarter if I'm going with 12 inch centers or if I'm going with 16 inch centers I will lay it at 15 and a quarter and that way I can mark both of them at one time now if I move this down to 31 and a quarter same thing and I slide back over to my next one that's 48 for my center I go 47 and a quarter and we just go all the way down the line just like that Everywhere where you see the red mark, you're going to follow through right behind it. So if you see at four feet, of course, that's four of the 12 inch ones and it's three of the 16 inch ones. It still falls at the same spot. Why? Because that's where your sheathing goes. If you were to lay out your plywood, your plywood has to be right in the middle and split the difference. That's why you, your layouts are like this at 16 inch centers. When you get four feet, the edge of your plywood, you're going to be right split in between. So your next piece of plywood goes here, and it's all laid out, and the seam is on your stud. This board goes all the way to the end. That's the one I want to measure first, okay? Does not really matter, but I'm going to do that one first right now. I lock my tape in place, take my square, and I set it up underneath my tape. And this is a short run. But it's going to continue on if I had a long run. I take this to 15 and a quarter inches, okay? That's going to be my first marking for my studs. It's easy to go ahead and transfer our mark over to the top. 
All right. Same with this one. So now when I lay these out, my studs are going to be in the exact spot from the top and bottom. I'm not going to have anything crooked. I know this is a short run, but as we know, no matter what, you need a stud on one end, you need a stud on the other end, and you need your studs in the middle. So we have enough room for three studs. I always lay out my crown side up or to one side. So this is, just say for instance, this has a little bit of a crown. That means it goes up and then back down. When I put my eye on it, I could see. When your crown goes up like that, that's what you want on the top side. Keep them the same because if this is a 32nd of an inch off, okay, just say it, it humps up just a tiny bit. And this one does too, a 32nd of an inch. You flip it upside down, now you have a 16th of an inch difference between that one and this one. So then you, you have a wall that waves. That's why you need to keep these in line with each other. You guys following me? This is pretty easy. And I'm not a complicated person, so I like to keep things easy. This right here was just made for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna set it on the side. I'll grab my base and top plate from my sides. Put it back right on my lines that I marked, right? And it matches the edge, it's super simple. So here's my base and top plate for my back wall. I'm not gonna measure from that, remember? I've gotta measure from the outside wall. So I will take this from the outside and again, do the same thing. Always put your X on the outside of where you're measuring. If you measure 15 and a quarter, if you're running short on that, always put it on the outside because you can see, you'll see exactly where that red mark is and you'll know that is where the stud should be, the center. This is where you'll mark it. You always put your X there. And you'll never be wrong as long as you do that. Then we'll have one right on the end. So what I'm going to do now is transfer my marks over real quick. Put this one. All right, we will, I'll put these together real quick. Be right back. We put our two walls together, right? You see this space isn't as wide as this one because we measured over to get our first 16 inch center. And everyone from then on is gonna follow in place, except for your last one, of course, depending on how long your, your building is. If it's, if it's an odd number or a number that doesn't fall on 16, then of course it's gonna be a little shorter. And that's what this is. So we're fine. Now, we will take our other wall and we're gonna screw it down so you can get a good look at this. And I need to hurry up because, of course, I'm in Louisiana and it's getting ready to rain again. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this corner. And the good thing about this is, if you mess up and forget to do it, you can come back in and drop a stud in here and you're okay. You need to have something where your plywood goes on the outside. Of course, if it goes right here, it's gonna go right across these studs and we're fine. But what about the inside? If we look at the inside, we're gonna have a problem. If you look right here, you're good from this side. If I decided to put sheetrock in here or if I decided to put plywood in here, but I can't do anything on this side. I have nothing to nail to, nothing to cover my seam. So what I'm gonna do is take another board, just like this, a stud, and I'll drop it right in. And what that does, if you nail it into this board, it's gonna take and cover this right here. So if I decide to put some sheathing on the inside, I'm good. I could put my drywall right here. That's one way of doing it. You see how my wall came this way and it stopped three and a half inches short because this wall goes all the way to the edge and goes that way. I tacked them together from this wall into this one. Boom, 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 from this side. Now, once that's done, all I have to do is take another stud and set up against this one right here and it makes a nice L. So the outside, it doesn't have to come all the way to the end here, it doesn't matter. I have sheathing that'll just nail right here and here. Now, this is one way to do it. I'm gonna show you another way. I'll take these screws out. The other way to do it is to take blocks and put in here. You would take three blocks 
in between your studs and you just set this in place just like this and then now when you tack these together it's going to form the same thing you're going to have your outside and your inside edge you can see here if i put my paneling or sheet rock in here i'm covered on both corners as well i'm just taking my scrap blocks putting in here i'm gonna tack it all together and it's only going to take a minute to put this whole thing together with the blocks you have another extra stud that way I can nail this one this wall into this one and then I have a flat surface here for my sheathing. I have a flat surface here all the way to the end for my sheathing. And then on the inside, I have an L. So when I put my drywall or any type of paneling here, I have a place to nail all the way to the corner. And this corner, I have the same thing. So that gives you a nice corner. Now remember when I told you about the top plate. If you're coming back to your top plate, you lay it right across the top here. And this will lock both of them together. You overlap it. Then you cut your other one short in here and you can overlap the front of that one and go and, and so on. That way all of this is locked in place. All right, with this, when I screw my top plate in or nail it in, I usually nail it, I will take and go right on, next to the stud or on the edge of this stud right here because I don't want to be in the center where someone might be putting electrical uh, parts in here. If they're trying to, to, to drill through this for anything, they can ruin their bits. If you do it right on the edge of the stud, the reason why I say on the edge of the stud is so you do not hit your two screws or nails that you have in the center here. You just go right to the edge. It's not gonna splinter it because you're not going through both plates and through this all the way. So if it punctures through on the end, it's not gonna hurt anything. That way, I'm right out of the way from, from my other contractors that are working if they're building if you're building a house and I'm not causing a problem for them and I'm also securing this well. So keep that in mind when you do if you're doing something on a house. On a shed it really does not matter. You can nail this anywhere and put them in. With this top plate, you tack the end. If it has a little curve to it, you pull it back or push it that way, whichever way you have to do, to keep this nice. You keep this line straight. Alright, and you'll You'll hit your tacks in. You be very, very careful with this, especially on a ladder. Do not keep your trigger on here because if you fall and it hits you, it's going to shoot through you. Just a, just a little warning. I'll tack this all the way. Here's my new driver that I bought from eBay. This is called the Metabo HPT 36 volt impact driver. Totally impressed with it so far. I've been playing with it, drilling with it, screwing things in, and I tell you, it's got all the power you need. It's 36 volts, and it's a multi-volt platform, which means you can take this thing, pull the battery out, and they have an adapter for it. It plugs right in, and you can use this cordless drill plugged into your wall. Really cool stuff. It comes with a 20-foot lead. I'm ordering that next because I want to play with that on this drill. Not only that, you can take this battery off, this multi-volt battery, put it on your 18-volt drill, this is a four amp hour battery. If you put it on an 18 volt drill, you have eight amp hours. That gives you a good bit of time for your saws, anything that works off of the 18 volt platform. Now let's talk about the Ingress Protection, the IP56, which you don't see on every tool. You don't see it on every Metabo tool as, as well, but they do have it on some of them and it's fantastic. I wish they had it on all of them. This right here, this IP56 tells you what this thing protects it against, or it has protection against. It has protection against dust and solids coming into it. That's what the five stands for. The six stands for water. It has protection against jets of water shooting in all directions, which means I can take this thing, throw it in the mud, get mud all over it, pick it up, take it and rinse it off, and go right back to work with it. That's how cool this thing is. It's not going to be messed up if you leave it out in the rain. You pick it up, you, you take your battery, dry it off, and you go back to town with it. This thing can roll. This right here has a gasket on the inside to protect it when it's sealed here. I took this thing apart to mess with it. 
just to see what it's made out of because I was, I was intrigued by it. Now I avoided my warranty. I also avoid my warranty by dunking it in a pool because you're not supposed to do that for two reasons. You're not supposed to dunk it underwater and you're not supposed to put it in chlorine. I took it out after that though and rinsed it off real good and it still worked. I'm going to choose one person from the first hundred people that comment to be a winner and we might choose somebody later down the line to win another one. So make sure you drop comments. It's real important. Hit like, make sure you subscribe and you have to ring the bell, just like I said at the beginning. Ring the bell on there, because that way I can notify you if you're a winner. I won't bother you with other things, but I will let you know if you're a winner.